Okay, hello. I welcome you to a few minutes of your time when I'm going to talk to you uh, about the International Journal of Avian and Wildlife Biology. My name is uh, Chris Bryant. Uh, I'm an adjunct professor at the University of Montreal in Quebec and also an adjunct professor at the uh, University of Guelph in Ontario. And I'm uh, uh, labeled as an honorary editor of the International Journal of Avian and Wildlife Biology. So just a few things about myself. Um, I started my university uh, career uh, at the University of Waterloo in 1970, and that was after having done a, my PhD, which was based on research of uh, ab agricultural uh, development uh, in the peri-urban area around Paris in France. Um, and while I was at the University of Waterloo, I started as assistant professor, then became associate professor, and then full professor. Uh, and I also spent six years as director of the economic development program at the University of Waterloo, which is a program that uh, focuses on the training of local development officers uh, in different municipalities and organizations across Canada. Uh, then I moved to Montreal in Quebec to the University de Montréal, uh, where I became a full professor in, in geography. And uh, uh, I, I went to, stayed there until 2014. And then I uh, retired uh, when I was uh, 2014. So um, I'm now an adjunct to professor, as I mentioned earlier, both at the University of uh, Montreal and also at the uh, University of Guelph. My research domains, just to give you an idea, are agriculture, of course, rural development, uh, strategic development planning, uh, land use planning, conservation, community development, and the adaptation of human activities to climate change and variability. And most of the time it has had to do with uh, agricultural adaptation to climate change and variability. So I just want to make a few comments on the International Journal of Avian and Wildlife uh, Biology. Um, as you probably already know, the IJAWB is a relatively recent journal. And despite that, it is becoming rapidly recognized by many researchers um, in many different countries. Uh, the journal has published articles of varying lengths, uh, basically on different domains of research related to avian and wildlife biology. Um, but it's also published articles related to the conservation of environments that are directly related to avian and wildlife uh, biology. And I would say just as important, uh, these published articles on how the various domains of avian and wildlife bi biology can be managed and conserved by different forms of development planning. And we're not just talking about land use planning, but principally uh, different approaches to undertaking strategic development planning, um, which is much more complex but much more holistic uh, in the way it treats things than land use planning is. So just a few words on conservation and avian and wildlife biology. Um, conservation of different types of landscapes uh, and the support they provide to different forms of avian and wildlife bio biology can be directly incorporated into strategic development planning, SDP. So SDP is not just about economic and social development, but we can use it to look at and plan for anything that can be related to the environment and therefore avian and wildlife biology. Uh, this is increasingly the case, 
as citizens become more and more directly involved in strategic development planning. Um, one of the interesting things about my experiences in Canada is that since the late 1980s, uh, there is an increasingly large number of communities, territories, counties, regions that have undertaken strategic development planning using um, citizen teams to actually manage the whole process of, of reflection uh, in terms of strategic development planning um, and also for them to become directly involved in identifying how we could go about, for instance, um, conserving the environment and therefore avian and wildlife biology. Uh, so the, what, what's very interesting then is that the values that uh, we as citizens uh, have regarding the environment and ecosystems of different kinds can be integrated, integrated directly into such development planning. And that's it. Thank you very much.